um, let's catch up on Brian Callen. What's Brian Callen doing these days? So obviously you guys are familiar with what's happening with Brian Callen, you know, um, numerous sexual uh, misconduct allegation against him. Um, some of them more serious than others, but so far there's been no real development. I'm not too sure if there are pending court cases happening at the moment or if it's just a matter of every individual sort of taking stock on the situation and allowing some time to heal. But essentially his career has you know, been put on pause, if not completely eradicated and stopped for the foreseeable future. And considering I'm a bit of a fan, it's really upsetting, but also considering the allegations, you can't take these kind of things lightly and you have to think, hey, man, those are some really meaty allegations that you need to somehow um, dismiss or to somehow exonerate yourself from in order to move forward. But, you know, he's decided in against doing whatever anyone else would do in his position, laying low. And Brian kind of decided to set up his own podcast on Patreon that was essentially a bit of a dupe it was a bit of a what what's that what, what do they call that they call that a um switcheroo was it thing was it called it's called something in it when you kind of present one thing and then when the person agrees and you then you know d- deliver something completely different but whatever in the, in the start it was kind of assumed that they were going to do the show called the fire in the rinks that kind of rebound the fire in the kid on patreon behind a paywall with brendan and brian but um cast media the production company that essentially pays these guys and you know puts the show together decided no they pulled the plug on it they said that no sponsorships would no sponsors would want to be associated with the show especially with these allegations above brian so he essentially had to then go ahead and use that poetry of money to decide to make a conspiracy theory show with sam tripoli which a lot of people seem to enjoy sam tripoli somebody in a conspiracy theory space conspiracy theory space who's very well respected if that's even a thing right but i think it is he does a lot of good work with his tim for hat podcast so that seemed to make sense but then obviously he maybe felt some level of guilt or maybe the fans were demanding some more content from him so now he's deciding to do this Callum report thing where he essentially sits down and muses about you know current topics that are going on in the world but he decided to do another update for his fans which might have come on the back of some patrons dropping off if you believe the numbers on um the fire and the kids subreddit he's lost about 100 over a few what over a couple of months and something right so big up the homeless cats for providing that information but he has kind of dropped dropped in for his patron describe and provide some update on what's going on with him personally so let's find out what brian callen is doing and what he plans to do with the patreon coins that he has successfully amassed from their big fan base <clears throat> Let's go back. Keep doing AKA Deep Waters uh, Conspiracy Social Club. We're going to have some guests on here as well. I'm going to start doing the Bookless Book Club, where you guys always ask me what books to read. What? Well, I'm going to find, and I'm going to put the, I, I'm going to literally find the best books that you should waste your time on. Let me explain. I'll- the sad thing is, he's a stand up comedian, right? Fair enough, he might be a little bit. Intellig- more intelligent than the average stand-up comedian but to suggest that your fans want book recommendations from you as if you're some sort of public intellectual in that regard is ludicrous and extreme but again i don't blame the guy your career has been you know completely destroyed on the off the back of in his opinion baseless accusations um he's not he's a creative dude he obviously has some vive uh, joie de vivre he has a, obviously some energy in him still. The worst thing you could be doing is kind of staring at your own reflection at home. You need to be having some level of creative output, but I just don't know who these people are that are demanding a book list from Brian Callen personally, but hey. I'll explain everything, but let me explain how most books work. You don't have to read the whole book. A book usually could be 25 pages long. Of course he doesn't have to, innit? He's like a LeBron James reader, innit? Where you're always kind of reading a new book, but only the first 10 to 15 pages. It could even be shorter. Because all books are basically, they make an argument. There's an argument. There's a central theme. Okay. In some ways, if it's fiction, it's the author's argument for how you should behave in the world. Okay. If it's nonfiction, it's usually an author's argument, which is essentially that we've been doing something wrong and we should be doing this instead. Okay. Sometimes it's just we've been doing something wrong and here are the fucking 400 pages of examples of that And? and a variation on that theme. That's why you don't have to read the whole book to is this information that we didn't know that some books contain information some books don't some books are summaries and some books are just explanations of issues like what is this be well read i tend to read the whole book because i love all the examples but nasim taleb who's an amazing thinker 
and an important voice on today's landscape. He wrote a book called Skin in the Game, Black Swan, um, Fragility. He's a mathematician, a statistician. I'm not going to ask people to read that book. I'm going to read it for you and I'm going to break it the fuck down. And I'm going to explain to you why it's important. Imagine getting secondhand information on complex issues from some of the leading intellectuals in our world, right? Um, mathematicians, physicians, scientists, inventors, cultural icons, getting it secondhand from Brian Callan. Somehow him distilling that information from these great minds and giving it to you, what, in, in a non-comedic form as well? Because it makes sense if he can provide, if he somehow does it the same way as his stand up, which is which I really rate. He's able to take these complex issues and sort of like pull apart, pull it apart, and provide some sort of comedic value to it. Right? Great. Right? I think he's um new pod, his new special complicated apes did a good job of doing that. Right? Um, societal issues through the through the lens of comedy. Great, amazing. But to take these complex issues that are you know um very well laid out in these books by some of our leading thinkers and you know. And then to kind of get that information through Brian Callan doesn't seem to be a good use of anyone's time. If you're not able to read, get an audio book and, you know, speed it up a bit. But don't get your information from Brian Callan, especially when he hasn't read the whole book himself as well. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to explain to you what there are ideas. There are ideas in books and nobody has time to read a whole fucking book. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take the nub. Completely wrong. If you have time to finish entire seasons of Breaking Bad, watch 90 day fiance back to back you have time to read you just don't want to do it you have to, anything that you want to do you'll make the time to do so if it's 20 minutes half an hour 10 minutes you'll do it so to suggest that no one's got time to read but they should have the time to sit down and listen to your re review of a book is just wild and again i sympathy for the guy because i'm sure you know not have, being able to do stand up not being able to go on your own show you need to have some level of creative output but surely this isn't the way forward and again Let's, let's kind of concentrate on the issue. This guy has multiple allegations over his head that he's having, having to deal with, right? I'd be more worried about making sure I prove my innocence, which is not, is that, is that do, you, uh, do you have to prove your innocence or do the accused have to prove your guilt? Where it goes to the point, right? We're living in this current era at the moment, especially when you see what Justin Bieber did regarding his allegations. You just have to prove your innocence so you can move on. If you, <coughs> if you can't prove your innocence, you can't move on with your life. And if I'm Brian Callen, the thing that I'm world class at is doing stand up and doing a podcast with my best friend. I'm not world class at being an intellectual. I'm not world class at book reviews, right? <clears throat> I'm not world class at being a a sort of like what a quasi talking head sort of figure. That's not what I do best. What I do best is do stand up, right? You know, he's passed at the comedy store. His name's on the wall. Some of the most reputable clubs across um, America in terms of stand up. He's pretty good as a comedic actor. That's what he should be focusing on. He should be making sure that he kind of dispels those allegations, puts those allegations to bed so he can resume his actual career, not this stuff, because this isn't a good use of his time. I don't think so. <clears throat> I'm going to the idea, and I'm going to put it in your head. I'm going to read it for you. I'm going to find what you should know about that book, and I'm going to stick it in your fucking head. And by the way, you're going to laugh the whole time, because there's nothing more boring than telling you, a, doing a book report. You better be laughing. So there is some comedic value to it, but again, is that really useful? Does that really do anything for anybody? Is that really what the fans have um, contributed five dollars plus to? And again, I mentioned it previously. I don't have a problem with the the whole um what's the thing? The bait and switch. That's what it's called. The whole bait and switch with the Patreon. I think um bait frequency mentioned his show that he thinks it was a bit scummy that they essentially set the patron up in terms of um supporting the show and starting up the fire in the rinks and then they switched it and then had him doing with sam tripoli i don't think that's the issue i think in general the donations and the subscriptions from the fans were essentially a show of support um for somebody that they love right tfak tfak army um decided that hey we want to back this guy we want to support him and i honestly do think as well just let's keep this in mind i have a, i'm very confident that they probably wouldn't have raised as much money if it was brendan going through the same thing i think a lot of fans really love brian callan and, and they love the fact that he kind of is a good compliment to brendan they brendan's kind of you know kind of a uh, dipped in popularity with people over the last few months especially with his um you know misinformation with COVID and just general attitude on the podcast since he's now been able to do stand up but i think 
that was really a show of support the, sub, the subscriptions and the support on patreon it wasn't really hey we want you to do the show this way but now that they've changed it i don't really see how you'd be happy if you're a fan of the show to have him decide that he wants to do book report shows and give that to you in some way shape or form that isn't what you go to brian callen for right even his cameos are better than this in my opinion Laughing and learning, and that's my goal. So that's what that's that's going to be a big segment on this fucking Patreon. It's good, right? Mm. And then what we're going to do no, is, is I'm going to have people on, rate the book. I'm going to have people read. Maybe I'll just have you read the chapters I think are important, or maybe the first chapter. And we're going to see. We're going to do like a rotten. So he hasn't even fleshed it out yet. He's just kind of you know throwing throwing things up, throwing things up against the wall and seeing what sticks. Read the first page. Read, read a couple of pages. Leave a rating. And now he's got his. You know he's got some. Uh, wind in his uh, sails with uh, Chin's cone sign. Look how, look how happy he looks. Tomatoes of books. And we're going to see what the fuck people who are real out there, people who listen to this, who work for a living. I don't want fuck. I'm, book reviewers can fuck themselves. Book reviewers have nothing in common with any of us who work for a, what? For a living. Comparative lit majors are not who we should be talking to. So we should be talking to stand up comedians who have. Anyway. I want to know what you think as a human being who lives in the real world. I want to know what you think is useful about the book. Does the book suck or does it not? And even if you're not a reader, I promise you, you're more right than the intellectual. Oh, no, you are. This is this is at the root of their kind of COVID denial, isn't it, really, right? When essentially their whole careers were decimated due to COVID and they got angry at Newsom and they wanted the economy to reopen up again so they can go and do the most important work, which was Navy SEAL stand-up comedy. This is at the root of it, right? This kind of um, rejection of what? Not authority or gatekeepers, but whatever it is, right? They've got some sort of rejection of the status quo and they think, you know what? If I do enough Google searches, if I watch enough videos on YouTube, I too can be a professional book review. I too can extract more out of things. But it's not, that's not what it's about. It really isn't. Like, especially in this era of mass information, it's more so you don't need to just sit there and listen to a book reviewer telling you what to think about a certain book. You just go and buy it yourself on Amazon Prime to get it delivered the same day or sometimes the next day and read it and make your own conclusions but to suggest that people shouldn't you know seek the counsel of people more more non more knowledgeable in the field that they're trying to pursue to learn in any way shape or form is nonsense to say that you know again the covid issue especially in the beginning right to say that there was an overreaction to it is maybe accurate but to suggest that somehow your area of industry is the most important thing to reopen right reopen the bloody stand-up comedy club so that they can go do their shows and make their money and support their lifestyles is just nonsense but again what do i know Tools. i'm telling you and we're gonna start our own fucking book review book rating system so that authors who have something to say who actually can speak to people with really good ideas to solve problems those are the people we're going to showcase i'm going to create my own rating agency that's going to go well isn't it? that's going to we're really looking forward to that and if, if you've seen if you've ever seen what he did prior with mixed mental arts which i didn't mind as a show i still think hunter marts is one of the better um podcasters out there who probably hasn't got a good enough platform to you know service him well i think he kind of you know did a bit of a bad job on joe rogan i think he came in a little bit too hot <laughs> on that show but um if you've seen what how they sort of did that show and you know the really clunky website and the fact that they had seven feeds uh, whether or not he's gonna be able to do this isn't again this is why he's it's beneficial that he kind of does everything in his power to make sure that he kind of clears his name so he can get back on the podcast with brian brendan sorry because he is the person that's able to action and really execute some of these ideas because for all the world in the world brian is never a good businessman that's the reason why he found success so late in life especially via brendan because he didn't really have the necessary not now, but you know whatever it may be to navigate this new media world and you know with the assistance of brian brendan and what he did and obviously joe rogan providing him the platform he was able to kind of have a bit of a second third fourth wind in his career but to suggest that on his own now isolated from his entire peer group publicly and maybe privately he can somehow build a rating system and a book club that's going to be of any value to anybody outside of himself is is a bit is a bit far-fetched yeah the book brian callen's bookless book club coming soon doesn't and the, make any sense bookless book club what is that is that like a twist on a flip of anti-social social club like the first book i'm gonna review it's going to be skin in the game 
imagine that's the first book you pick a Nicholas Nassim Taleb book a book that I've still what I've read like twice and still haven't got the gist of it he's going to somehow be able to distill it after reading only a couple of pages and then summarize it in a comedic way for his fans Nassim Taleb's book about the fact that you should be listening to people who have skin in the game. I wonder what Nassim Taleb will actually say about it. Too. People who pay a price for the risks they take. They don't pass the risk on to other people or pay no price when they make a major fucking blunder. Like sending a bunch of men and women who are brave to a country like Afghanistan or Iraq and keeping them there to the tune of trillions of dollars. While people die and being like, eh, I'm on to my next job. Wasn't my fault. Go fuck yourself. Anyway, thanks a lot for listening. I'm excited. And I'll be on the road, kids. I got Indianapolis. I got Oklahoma. That's interesting. I got um, Kansas City. I got, uh, where else am I going? I'm going to Addison at the end of the month. That's a good thing. So at least the comedy clubs are sticking by him. But let's see what happens anyway. I don't think this is definitely going to materialize in the way that he thinks it's going to materialize. I'm interested to see what somebody like an Amy Kaufman decides to do. She's got a complete, she's got a real harden for these LA comedians. She seems to be hell bent on making sure she takes them down. So I wonder if she's going to have a freelance reporters sat in the audience, uh, taking notes on what he says regarding the allegations against him. And you're probably going to get them reported out of context in sound bites on in an article in Los Angeles time very, very soon. And it's just going to restart start the allegations again so that's what i mean I've, i just don't think he's dealing with this in the right way right number one he's not addressing or not trying to maybe he's privately i don't know maybe he is but it just doesn't seem like the right way to go about things now going back on the road it's just going to you know resurface all the allegations are going to come back up again people are going to be saying that he should be cancelled he shouldn't be on stage and all this sort of stuff it just isn't worth it again it isn't worth it it's just more trouble than what it's worth what he's actually he should be spending his time on is clearing his name so he can get back on stage get back on the show with brendan and go about resuming his hollywood career at the moment what he's doing now trying to become some quasi version of stephen colbert or you know um Stephen Crowder, um, and then to do stand-up shows, you know, in secret or not in secret without his peer group as well. It doesn't doesn't seem like the right way to go about things, especially with such serious allegations around him. But again, what do I know? Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you think Brand Brian, sorry, is going about this the right way? Will you be joining the uh, Bookless Book Club? Um, will you be following him on tour? And um, do you think this is the right way to go about things in general? Let me know in the comments down below. What else?